just above me is a Falcon 9 rocket, and it was used in 2017 for an ISS resupply mission and is successfully landed. This one has 9 Merlin rocket engines. What's amazing about this rocket is it's reusable, which helps drive down costs since the first stage can be reused and reflown several times. We are here in the Johnson Space Center Exhibits Hall. Let's take a look at the exhibits and explore. Johnson Space Center is a space aficionado's dream destination. If you're in Houston, you can't miss visiting this place. There are lots of space exhibits talking about the past achievements of NASA and its future endeavors. Here's a display of the different versions of the Saturn rocket and NASA's Mission to Mars exhibit. The crown jewel of Johnson Space Center is a Saturn V rocket, and let's go over there now. Right behind me is a Redstone Mercury rocket, which sent America's first astronaut, Alan Shepard, to space. Behind me is the Saturn V rocket, which was used during the Apollo space program to send astronauts to the moon, and uh, it's massive. Take a look at that. Behind me is the uh, first stage of the Saturn V, and uh, this had the uh, F1 engines, and uh, this would separate after liftoff, soon after liftoff, so that all that weight will not be brought up by the rocket. This would actually just crash into the ocean after it lifted off in Kennedy Space Center. On this side is the rocket for the uh, second stage, and uh, once this separates, then the second stage would ignite and send the, uh, the rest of the Saturn V uh, rocket up beyond the atmosphere and uh, into orbit. This rocket is flight ready. This is supposed to be used for the Apollo 19 flight, but that mission was eventually canceled. And so, yeah, this is the only remaining flight ready Saturn V rocket in existence. Behind me is a stage three, and the stage three uh, portion of the rocket would actually um, send the uh, Saturn V and the Apollo capsule into orbit and upper orbit and then after that it would actually the crew would do some checks and then about 12 or 13 minutes later they would it would reignite and send the rest of the uh, capsule the Apollo capsule and the uh, lunar landing module into uh, towards the, the moon so it was quite an important component just behind the capsule is the lunar landing module and the command module and the astronauts would transfer back into this re-entry capsule to re-enter earth and this is the escape rocket which would be used in case of an emergency and would rocket the capsule where the astronauts were during launch and bring them to safety. You can see the flags from Apollo 1, Apollo 7, Apollo 8, Apollo 9, and 10. What's interesting is none of these missions actually landed on the moon. The one that eventually landed on the moon was Apollo 11 right there. It was quite tragic what happened with uh, Apollo 1 with Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chafee, who died during a ground check in an in-capsule fire. That was an amazing look at the Saturn V rocket and those F1 engines were just massive. This is the White Room, and it's the area where the astronauts made their final preparations before entering the space shuttle. And here's the orbiter access arm. It swings from the launch tower and allows access to the orbiter, so it's just basically a bridge. What we see here is a converted Boeing 747 that NASA used to ferry the space shuttle from Edwards Air Force Base back to Kennedy Space Center when the shuttle would land on the lake beds of California. NASA had to make some structural changes to 747 like its unique tail to ensure stability during flight. Here's a full replica of the space shuttle. This one is called the Independence. 
it enables visitors of Johnson Space Center to experience a shuttle and give visitors a sense of how the astronauts live and work on board. Here we are at the cockpit area. The cockpit of the space shuttle was upgraded throughout the shuttle program with a final upgrade featuring glass displays. We can see this large payload area where the Hubble telescope, countless military and civilian satellites, and parts of the International Space Station was stored aboard. We are inside the 747 where NASA flight engineers would spend their time during the flight back to Kennedy Space Center. This area is normally empty, but it's now been converted into an exhibit area. Wasn't that an amazing quick tour of the Johnson Space Center? Johnson Space Center is located south of Houston. There's also an outlet mall nearby for you shoppers out there. And it's a short drive to Galveston where you can experience historic houses and the boardwalk. From the amazing Johnson Space Center in the great Lone Star State of Texas, see you again next time. Goodbye!